Hello, welcome to Shusa by Susan. Today I wanted to take a look at the current Lionsgate portal that we're in and um, what is the Lionsgate portal if you're not familiar with it and how we can best utilize it, what's going on with it and how we can um, all integrate it. And I, I wanted to start the reading today by um, just pulling a card, I want to talk about a what it is, Siri, or what uh, the Lionsgate portal is, and and then and then do the reading. But I I pulled a, a nature's oracle card to start to just set the tone, and and I loved that the trust your own judgment came out. I mean this and it's such a beautiful card. It's got the the owl on it. There's um, the beautiful purple colors which you know activate the crown chakra. There's the butterflies, they, they love to use butterflies and the, the wings. And to me, you know, this is just wisdom and understanding and your own personal knowledge. So that is really, really important to me around this and many, many other things that, that are going on on the planet right now and people's takes on things and, and people's different people's information. Because nobody has any information that you don't already have. Some people are uh, more in tune with certain things than other people, and so they can provide guidance or they can provide confirmation, but nobody can provide activation codes. I see a lot of these, like around Lionsgate, especially around the Lionsgate portal, people are, if you pay them $20 and come listen to their webinar, they're going to give you the codes and they're going to activate you and and bring the energy in for you and blah 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 and I, I'm like wow this this stuff is is coming in to you and to me and to everyone that's on the planet because what what the Lionsgate portal is is it, it tracks back to ancient Egypt okay this is this is what the start of it is and to this the system of Sirius which contains the, the stars Sirius A, which is a big, massive star, and then Sirius B, which is a really relatively tiny um, dwarf star in, in the series, so that it looks like one big star, but it's actually two stars. And what it is is uh, the rise of Sirius on, on the eastern horizon. It's just before sunrise, and it, it happens annually. And there's a word for it, which I can never remember how to pronounce. Uh, I'm not even going to try it. So there is a word. <laughs> there's an official word, a scientific word that, ha you know, but it, it's not, it's not um, only this star system that this happens to. So anyway, this is when, when Sirius is rising on the horizon just before, on the eastern horizon, just before sunrise. And it happens every 365.25 days so which is right one year of course and it it starts usually around July 26 um, sometime in that time frame you know depending on you get that 0.25 days so it's going to shift around just like our calendar and then um, it runs through I think you know around 16th the 20th of August but it's at its peak and Sirius is at its closest to the earth so the most intense vibrational energies um, around the 8th of August, 8-8. Eight, eight. And they call that the Lionsgate portal because it happens in, in the sign of um, Leo, the lion. And what it, what's going on is with Sirius, you know, being a star, and it, it's, it, like our own star, is sending cosmic rays and cosmic energy at us. And this year, I feel it's more significant than, than probably any other year because each year are the magnetic fields on the planet which protect us, quote unquote, from this cosmic radiation. It is dropping. It drops significantly um, every year. And so right now, the magnetic fields are pretty much at the lowest point that they've been in, in whatever, however long. So as these cosmic rays are coming in, where you know very little of it is being kept out and and I do know that where the magnetics are typically lowest on the planet um, or is where the there are areas of great turmoil and great change like the Middle East is known to be an area of typically lower magnetics and and so there's always a lot of flux right in the in the Middle East whereas say Texas 
that it's very high magnetic and it's, it's much harder for change to happen in the areas of high magnetics. So as the magnetic fields drop on the planet, it makes sense as to why we're seeing all this, this chaos because we're all changing rapidly as this information comes in and it's not getting blocked out. And I call it information because that's what it is, right? It's, it's light photon energy, just like the sun is bombarding us with information and energy every day. These cosmic rays are coming in from Sirius and, and the Egyptians believe this also. The, the Egyptians looked at this as a time of, of enlightenment, a time when the, your, the individual could really, really grow and really learn and really start to discern and understand not only themselves, but the, their place on the planet, their place in the universe, and really what was going on. So the pyramids, so much so that the pyramids are actually aligned with um, Sirius, you know, as well as with Orion's belt. So on 8-8, on eight, eight, Sirius and the Earth are both in direct alignment with the galactic center, and it, it's just a time, so the, the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, are you know, really a time of intense um, influx of light information, of photon information. And we were just talking about this with how important it is to decalcify the pineal gland because it's the pineal gland that processes the photon light information. And, and so this is gonna be a great couple of days to really amp up the meditation, whatever that looks like for you, quiet time and downtime so that you can absorb the, the light. You don't have to look for great enlightenment. You don't have to go anywhere for activation or you don't have to go to anyone else for understanding. You're getting this information and it's going to be activated. And the more of it you can anchor and the more you can just open yourself to awareness, it's going to bubble up. It's going to integrate over time, over the next couple of months. You'll see an integration of the energy. You'll see what understanding you'll see more understandings you know little shifts and things depending on how you process it you know you can let the photon light come in and it can go right out and you can let someone else process that for you or you can trust your own judgment and take the time to let the information let the light energy anchor into your body and then be willing to process it as it comes up and out and usually that's going to look like getting triggered you know changes coming in your life. Most of us are, are a little uncomfortable when it comes to change. So, you know, it's, it's a really big time. I, we don't you really don't hear, you don't hear a lot about the Lionsgate portal. And I think that that's a mistake. You know, there's more, much more um, focus on the planets and the eclipses. And I feel like this is really, really important. So I wanted to, to put this out and I am going to, to put out some, some information around it, just general planetary information. But you're trusting your own judgment so you can, can take my information and maybe it'll give you some confirmations. Maybe it'll mean nothing to you. You know, maybe as always, there might be some little pearl of wisdom. That's always my hope that just, like I said, I feel like a good reading is gonna just confirm for you what you already know or what you were already thinking or you were just on the verge of making that breakthrough yourself. And it's just a little helpful nudge from spirit for you. I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to use the um, Osho Zen Tarot because they tend to be very, um, but they tend to be pretty intense, and I, I want to work this on a really individual and inner level. You know, it's, this is about a time about you, and they're not focusing your energy on on the little dramas and not getting caught up in the all the little storylines about what. Is going on or what could be going on it's time to take the information and make it real make it practical make it something that you can use not some kind of story about this is coming to the planet or that's coming to the planet or you know you're in the here and the now that's where we're supposed to be we're here we're right here we're right now so let's let's use this energy for ourselves and for our own personal growth and for our own personal empowerment Let's see what the Usho Zen has to tell us. I won't make it too long because I've already been rattling on. So the first card that has come out is the Adventure card. 
And I love the, the colors in this card. I love it when they have a lot of the colors. You've got the full spectrum of colors. All right, this is an adventure. This, what's coming in and what's coming forward for us is gonna be an adventure. I think we can all relate to that, right? This is the, the rainbows, the suit of rainbows. And, you know, so it's, this is spirit telling us to, hey, you know what, have fun. Because this is going to be, this is gonna be exciting. And the second card that's come up is healing. So as we adventure on, we're going to be healing ourselves. A lot of times that does involve triggers or it just involves looking back at old wounds and being willing to let the light shine on those wounds and let the light reveal to you what those wounds are doing for you, how they're protecting you. Wounds are the ego protecting you from something that happened in the past and something that you felt was going to destroy you. This is what the old wounds are for and this is what's healing right now. I think that's really beautiful. We have this little symbol over the heart chakra. So, you know, it's this whole being willing to see things that you're holding on to and and let the light shine. And, you know, when you shine and look at it and just let it have a, its little moment in the, in the light, a lot of times that's all it's going to take. Um, wow. Then the, um, the third card that's come up is the existence card. So really this is very profound. Notice a lot of the star energy and so this is a very as I said this is a very profound time for the for the Lionsgate portal for the cosmic radiation the cosmic energy that's coming in with the with the magnetics being low it's a great opportunity for humanity to absorb as much of this information as they can and it, it relates to our very existence this is the number one major arcana card in the deck and you know this is a starting point for us. This is a new, a new starting point, um, and a new year. You know, for the Egyptians, we're in we're in a new year. So let's go back to the Egyptians. A new year, a new you. A lot of transformation, a lot of healing. I think this is very. I think this is very exciting. Um, then the third card that, or the fourth card that's come up here for us is the burden. So, two things come in about this. One is that. As we move into this space of personal responsibility and self-awareness, in a way, it, it adds a burden, um, a yoke, as you, if you want to call it, uh, of, of um, really being willing to be authentic and express that outwardly. And sometimes, you know, that can, that can be a little tricky and a little complicated if people don't understand. But it also, this also relates to, to me to a release of burdens. What's going on here is as you take personal responsibility, as you get into self-awareness and acceptance of self and, and the healing, these burdens that you've been carrying around, this baggage is going to be lifted. And you're, like I said, you're moving into this new space and it's a space of creativity. It's a space where... Um, you can start anew and, and the next card that came in is the clinging to the past so we're going to trip ourselves up and burden ourselves by by trying to hold on to the old and trying to think that we can do things the old way and, and looking back the way that we've been doing things haven't been working anyway but it's easy and it's comfortable and so we we cling to the past so if we can push through this this, you know, letting go of the past, being willing to do something different. Did we move into this space of transformation that I'm talking about? So, you know, it's not a walk in the park. It's not. When this, the light, these light um, energies come into us and we get revealed to ourselves and we're comfortable with the, the old self. We're comfortable with our old wounds and how our old wounds protect us. We're comfortable projecting our issues onto other people this is how we're comfortable. It, it, it takes the burden away, in a way, to project our issues onto others. And it's, that it's their fault that they've done this and they've done that. It's their issue. But in reality, what those people are doing is reflecting you to you. They're reflecting some aspect of yourself that's wounded and that you're really not too willing to let go of. And if you can step back and see that, this is when you move into this, this place of transformation. 
And the trust card comes up. Look at this. You know what? It's, it's step off and go. It's trust yourself. It goes back to trust. It's come up twice now. Trust your judgment. Trust yourself. Trust that if you integrate your wounds, that, that you are going to move into this transformation and you are going to be in a much more comfortable place. And what, what, um, what's coming in really around the, the trust card is that if you can um, look at the old wounds and use the light to see them and see what you're really holding on to, you can um, give the, that wound a new job. Say, okay, I see that you have you know, protected me from people who um, are talking about me behind my back or who are taking my ideas at work and making them their own. Or you know, wherever you're seeing that you're injured and you, you feel you constrict and you judge and you get angry, that's your ego protecting you from from hurt and you can see that and see that 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 wound that if the you know if you weren't wounded there you wouldn't you could care less whether this person did this or didn't do this so if you can see that wound and give it a new job give it a job of seeing ahead of time whether someone is going to be like that or not like that not after the fact or see ahead of time the people who are going to to be promoting you and going to be helping you rather than are going to be trying to take what's yours and and steal from you or you know whatever the situation is that it applies to use ask that bit of ego to be discerning ahead of time instead of reactive after the fact and you'll be surprised at how how quickly um, the ego will really step in and do that and how you can really learn to trust yourself in this Okay, let's see. I don't want to go over the keep they keep hashing because the, the same I don't want to go really too much into the, the burdens and, and the judgment. Um, as you trust yourself, you're you're opening up new possibilities, you're opening up new experiences, and, and when you move into this space, the stepping out of judgment, stepping into personal responsibility, you're you're opening up your space to just have an experience no matter what that experience is. And you can interpret the experience as positive or you can interpret the experience as negative. You can interpret anger as a positive thing, you can. It depends on how you use it. You can interpret fear as a positive thing. You can, you know, you can interpret it however you want to interpret it. If you want to interpret these things negatively, go ahead and interpret them negatively. But if you don't interpret them and just experience them, now, this is being in the moment. This is where you achieve totality. This is the totality card. I don't know how well these cards, you can even see them. I don't have my computer very well. The totality card, which is, you know, everything coming together and flowing much more smoothly. You're making connections. And then again, you know, the Thunderbolt card. So we're starting to get repetitive with change. And it's a constant process, right? You know, we started all the way back down here with change and existence and transformation and more change and more change you know and that's that's life this is the this is the process of life so i'm gonna i think the osho zen has given all the osho zen wants to give i'm gonna pull a couple more cards for us for the lion's gate portal from the frequency deck see what the frequency tarot has to say and then it's a lot of information i really feel like and it, it does it just takes the the settle and focus I've got a card that wants to come out. I'm just going to do three. Let the light come in. Is what keeps coming in to me. So the first card is the moving forward card. Move this guy out of the way. The second card is the catalyst card. And the third card is the higher purpose card. And, you know, these cards basically are just confirmation for what we've already been talking about. Is this, you know, we're at a, a new beginning. It's time to move forward. Things are going to be happening. The Thunderbolt card, 
the transformation card. Things are going to be happening. They're going to be they're catalysts for change. They're going to trigger you, and you're going to use this new light energy to propel yourself forward. And the higher purpose card came out, and, and to me this is a double meaning. The higher purpose is, number one, the higher purpose is just to be and to experience. That's why we're here. That's, that is why we're here as humans. We're here to have experiences and learn from those experiences. But I also feel like, and I, this has come up a bit in some of the past readings, where we're, we're moving more into our space of purpose. Why are we here? It's a big time on the planet. And, and we need to be inwardly prepared for it and inwardly prepared for whatever's going to happen or what's not going to happen. You know, it can be all peaceful and easy and smooth and, you know, we don't know what's going on in this transitional period, but the point is for you to be prepared within yourself for what you're called to do within yourself, what lights you up, what makes you live, what is your real higher purpose and again it can be a very very simple thing and it can be as simple as just I'm here to have fun I think the very one of the very first cards that came out is the adventure card we're here to have fun we're here to have an adventure we're here to learn and you know if you can take your higher purpose back to as simple as that that makes it all really pretty peaceful so it is a big time, and like I said really early on, I think what the, the most important thing you can do right now is to really spend some time in meditation, and even if it's a couple times a day, if it's short, two, three times a day, walking meditation, time out in nature where you're quieting your mind, and, and you know, just really feel yourself physically pulling in as much of that energy and anchoring it as you can, much of that light, and then it will process, it will come up and out going forward. And you, again, don't need to be activated and you don't need to be, have any special codes. You've got this and use your own inner awareness and trust yourself and your own understanding of, of what is right for you.